Infernax is a retro-inspired, 8-bit, side-scrolling action platformer. I'll throw the phrase Metroidvania out there because it includes those elements, but word on the internet is that this is Castlevania II Simon's Quest that should have been, with a dash of Zelda II thrown in. Personally, I never played any of these games. I started with a Super Nintendo and not an NES, so games like Metroid or Castlevania II weren't on my radar, and for that matter, Super Metroid and Super Castlevania weren't either. But recently, after watching the Castlevania Netflix series, I had an urge to try a Castlevania, and lo and behold, the Castlevania Advance Collection came out, so I tried Aria of Sorrow and fell in love with that game. So when I saw Infernax pop up on my Xbox in the Game Pass section, I downloaded it to give it a try, and wow, I wasn't expecting this game, to be honest. Welcome to Current Kick Games, I'm Billy, and this is the second entry in my Game Pass or Play series, where I check out Game Pass games and give my thoughts if you should check them out. For next, I really didn't expect this. I beat the game and I couldn't put it down. So what is Infernax exactly? It's a love letter to 8-bit side-scrollers with RPG elements. Duke Alcidur the Knight returns home after the Crusades and finds that his homeland has now been infested by monsters, demons, and the undead. Controlling Alcidar, you battle your way across the map, towns, dungeons, bosses, and tons of secrets, and as you progress you gain new abilities, spells, weapons, and armor upgrades and can level up your damage, health, and mana through gained experience from you got it, killing monsters, and completing the main story along with side quests. I mentioned Metroidvania because Infernax includes those elements, if maybe a bit light. Can't continue east because it looks like you need to jump over a tall wall? You can probably clear it once you learn the Sky Call ability, which is basically a double jump upward strike. There are a few of these to unlock as the game progresses, and luckily the game world isn't too large so getting around isn't that bad. And funny enough, I just found out that there's a teleport spell that I didn't find on my first playthrough, which would make things even easier. Gameplay is solid. Alcidar controls really well, his attacks and jumps feel right. This is attempting to emulate NES era games in the genre. While these were design choices, I think it would have benefited from some quality of life improvements. And don't get me wrong, I appreciate what they're going for in a retro-inspired game, but there's a reason why I didn't stick with playing many of these older games, the difficulty and just the frustration. Many old games have a lack of instruction on what to do or where to go next, or very basic map functions, etc. In Fernax, I felt could have given us a bit more. The map is fine, but I would sometimes forget where an important NPC was that sold elixirs, a potion that fully recovers both your health and mana, or which town had the merchant with the spell I wanted to buy but didn't have quite enough gold for it at the time. It would have been nice to have a map that highlighted this information, but this was more of a minor inconvenience and wasn't a deterrent of my fun. Other minor issues. Instead of a double jump, Alstor has an upward strike that only goes straight up, so you only have control on his descent and also his dash attack. I thought it was a bit annoying to use. Holding the attack button until Alstor glows allows you to release the button with your Holy Charge attack, a horizontal mace attack that shoots Alstor a bit too far for my liking. The majority of the later dungeons requires the use of this skill and it easily overshoots your desired landing spot more often than not, which usually ends in an instant death due to falling right into lava or water. And I found using this as an attack would sometimes slide me right into an oncoming enemy attack, not killing them and damaging me. I reserved this skill for platforming only. Interestingly enough, I didn't find Infernax that difficult. I defeated the majority of the bosses in a single try. It was the dungeon leading up to the boss where I actually found difficulty, and from the platforming. There are some difficult runs to get through, moving platforms, spike bricks, and enemies that love to stand right on the edge and knock you into that death liquid. While I would get a little frustrated with these sequences, finally getting through them actually felt quite rewarding. I was happy that the boss fights weren't insanely hard, as I may have gotten frustrated enough to quit the game if I lost all my progress over and over again trying to get through the platforming sequences. And to be fair, I'm a filthy casual. I very quickly moved from classic difficulty to casual. Classic, I wanted no part of. It's the intended difficulty, yes, but there are less save points and you lose your progress, your XP and gold upon death. Switching or starting on casual mode was the way for me. There are additional save points throughout the game. You keep some of the gold and XP you found on that current run if you die and lose all of your continues. And you start with an extra life. The beginning of the game is a bit difficult either way due to low health and low damage, but I actually find the game to be quite easy in the later parts, especially once I found the OP Holy Light spell, had maxed health, maxed damage, and the best mace and armor in the game. 
Infernax just always kept me interested. There was always a new side quest line to do, a decision to make, a side boss to fight. I haven't had this much fun with a game in probably years. I'm going to get into some minor spoiler territory here, but it's nothing that really looking at the achievement or trophy list wouldn't tell you. Choice plays a big part of Infernax. Decisions you make put you on a path of good or bad, and these are actually pretty significant as they open or sometimes close different spells, quest lines, and bosses. I finished with a good run and then realized that there were a few more quests to do that would allow me to see the ultimate good final castle and face the true good line end boss. If you play through the evil quest line, for example, and decide to join the cult, on my good playthrough I took them out, you take their colors, throw down your mace and shield for a two-handed sword and a different set of spells. This is awesome, and I haven't even gotten to the real secrets, and there are so many in Infernax. There are multiple alternative character options to play as. By entering specific names during the character name selection screen, you can unlock an axe-wielding warrior with big damage and range, but a slower attack speed, an extremely difficult mage to play since every attack uses mana, although it does slowly recharge over time. Expect to dance around enemies while waiting for your magic to recharge with this one. Or what about entering the Konami code at the start screen? This basically turns the game into Contra as your new character can shoot a machine gun. There's quite a bit more as there's a cheat code section that lets you unlock tons of lives, unlimited mana, a jetpack to name a few. And for completionists out there, filling out the bestiary high enough, which will require multiple playthroughs, most likely a good and evil, will open up a secret quest line for the true ending of the game, which I won't spoil here. There's just so much to like about Infernax. I thought the game length was a good one for me, longer than I thought for my first playthrough, eight and a half hours for the good ending. Luckily the game throws you back into the world allowing you to go and finish up anything you missed. I wound up finding a quest I missed and was actually able to complete the ultimate good ending, which gives you an additional dungeon and an alternative final boss to battle, and that topped me out at about 11 and a half hours. Berserk Studio really created a fantastic game. Obviously, this is a game play from me. Since I beat it, I'll throw out a review score. Easy, 5 out of 5, amazing. No, it's not perfect. As I mentioned, some of the platforming was a bit BS, and I could have used some quality of life improvements, but overall, Infernax was just plain awesome. I actually feel like this game might make my top games of all time list, which is kind of insane. I did not expect that. I can see myself playing through this yearly, and this is big for me, as I have limited time for games, I almost never replay a game, especially right after I beat one. Infernax has definitely opened up my world to checking out more Metroidvania side-scrolling games. Infernax is available for $19.99 on PS4, Switch, Steam, Xbox One, and Series S slash X, and is currently on Game Pass. I think the price is fine as there's a lot of replay value, but I will say if you ever see this on sale and you don't have it yet, it's a must-buy if it looks interesting to you. Let me know if you check this out on Game Pass, and if you have any similar games I should check out, as long as they're not too difficult. Like this video and subscribe for more videos in my Game Pass or Play series, and video gaming videos in general. Until next time, see ya.